In the beginning, there was darkness. Good, honest, hard-working citizens left their homeland in an effort to distance themselves from an overbearing and unscrupulous monarchy. This new land brought promise of a second chance, an opportunity for the people to pursue their own happiness. A place where the government couldn't just steal your money without asking. A place where they could be individuals. The people were quite happy with this new arrangement. Their king, unfortunately, was not. For a short period, his highness maintained a level of control over the new colonies, overseeing trade between them and Mother England, taking more money that didn't belong to him. But this time, the people rebelled. As it turned out, their struggles for freedom had taught them the true value of independence. On July 4th, 1776, they made it official, scribing their plans for liberty onto the legendary document. No longer would they have to suck any shit from their old oppressors. They became the masters of their own destiny. Yes, on that day, the United States of America became the coolest fucking place on earth. The celebrations, however, were cut short. King George waged war on the free people of America, sending legions of his best troops to do his dirty work. Once again, the Americans rebelled, this time with guns. They were willing to risk everything because they valued their independence even more than they valued their own lives. For once, they had a taste of the good life, and there was no turning back. They banded together, fought their hearts out, and proved that numbers were not the only requirement for winning a war. The British pushed, and the Americans pushed back. Volunteers from across the land answered the call and fought to defend their country. After realizing they were outsmarted and outmatched, the British, like a bunch of pussies, ran away. And from that point on, America became the nation that you didn't want to fuck with. But foreign enemies were not the only threat that America would have to face. Some of the lazier and less intelligent members of society believed that freedom should be a right granted only to whites. And again, a war was waged. As fate would have it, these narrow-minded rednecks got their asses kicked. For America was a place where slavery would not be tolerated in any form. The moral conclusion was that no individual should have to work for the benefit of another. That all citizens should provide the labor and the resources necessary to support themselves. So a pact was made, and every U.S. citizen promised to carry his or her own weight, relying on the taxpayer only when absolutely necessary. And once again, there was darkness. Hello? We need your help. Bad Dad has struck again. He knocked up some unsuspecting, unemployed teenager. I'm in no shape for another rescue. Can't the authorities handle this? The police are as overworked as you are. This girl is alone. She's scared, and she's in serious trouble. She comes from a fertile family that she can't afford the morning after filming. And you know bad dad never sheathes his sword. And there's just one more thing. She's his back. I can provide you with an all-expensive paid trip to Planned Parenthood, or they'll provide you with a state-of-the-art abortion. <laughs> How far along are you? Eight months. Oh, boy. No time for the VIP treatment. Looks like we're going to have to do this the old-fashioned way. Hey. You're a poor... Oh, 
the taxpayer. I've been kidnapped. I'm still alive. But in three days' time, I will be executed. My captors have no demand and will accept no money as substitution for my death. On Tuesday, November 6th, at 3 p.m., my sentence will be carried out and I'll be put to justice right before your very eyes. Really? This type of yard doesn't need an apostrophe. I mean, seriously, guys, this is second grade stuff here. Who are you calling? There's only one man I know who can help in a situation like this. Who? The taxpayer. Oh, good idea. Yes, he'll know what to do. Damn it. Pick up. What's the matter? He's not answering. Something must be wrong. Well, who in the hell else are we supposed to call? How about the police? Ah, oh, they're no good. What about the government? Oh, that's us. We're supposed to know what to do in an emergency. God damn it! What do we do when we can't turn to the taxpayer? I got it. What about the playbook? Oh, yeah. The playbook. It's got a solution for every possible contingency. Good thinking, boys. Yeah, let's see. Y'all done with that? Yeah, it's no good to us anyway. I couldn't help overhearing, but sounds like maybe you guys could use some help. Oh, yes, we could. But the help we need is going to be executed in three days' time. I might have an idea. If you're thinking of calling the taxpayer, don't bother. He's not answering. No, this is, uh, something else. What about common sense and personal responsibility? Common sense and personal responsibility? They haven't been active since the Reagan administration. Yeah, I heard they flooded the city 20 years ago. They've been living up in the woods ever since. I heard the same thing. But I think I might know where to find them. What's the point? Those guys have been retired since I was in the first grade. Yeah, what's so special about them? It's not like they have superpowers. Actually, they do. Oh, yeah? Common sense has the power of deductive reason. It's able to look at situations without filtering them through bias, tradition, or faith. A true thinker. And the other guy? Personal responsibility. He's constantly striving to make himself a better person. He eats right, exercises, saves his money, he reads. He's 100% completely self-sufficient. And he never asks for anything from anybody else. Look... We're desperate here. Unless you know how to get a hold of the taxpayer, this might be our only chance. Hey, I know you. It's hard not to be recognized when you're a billionaire. You see, the boys and I think it's time for a new stadium. That's where you come in. New stadium? What's wrong with the old one? The local sports commission owns the damn thing. Most of the concession sales pass right by our nose, and we don't even get a taste or a sniff. Concessions? I thought we were talking about football here. You see, we've got plans for a billion dollars, state-of-the-art stadium on the old Metrodome site. The problem is, we don't want to pay for it. But quite frankly, neither do the fans. What's wrong? A state-of-the-art stadium I built you 30 years ago. And more importantly, why would I pay to see the worst team in sports compete? Oh, you're gonna pay for it. And there's not a damn thing you can do about it. Down! The following is paid for by Pansy for President 2012. I'm Congressman Dick Pansy, and I approve this badass music montage. Boys and girls. We're all gathered here today because we face a crisis, an ever-expanding emergency, the likes of which man or womankind has yet to experience. You see, a new enemy jeopardizes everything we've worked so hard, or haven't worked at all, to achieve. And further, wants us to actually pay for our own food, schools, roads, homes, and homes away from homes. 
No, you will be told by this enemy that you no longer possess unlimited rights, unlimited freedoms, that life isn't fair, that people aren't created equally. But what this misguided ideology seems to be missing is heart. Ladies and gentlemen, my point being that the enemy of which I speak to you today is indeed very powerful. But nevertheless, I, Dick Pansy, presidential candidate, possess a secret weapon designed to destroy and vanquish it. And in the process, win the hearts and minds of the masses. Consequently, I give to each and every one of you gathered here today the ignorance and arrogance orbs. Despite having nearly been killed by the ignorance of a bad driver, Richard Randolph arrived safely at his destination. What remained to be seen, however, was whether or not the retired superheroes could be persuaded. Seriously, who are you? My name is Richard Randolph. I'm a friend. Friend? I don't know you. Never seen or talked to you. Not even acquainted. It stands to reason we're not friends. <laughs> you are good. We need your help? Yeah. Who's we? The entire city. And if we don't do something soon, the rest of the world, too. Talk straight, man. We'll give up on us 20 years ago. <coughs> Only the assholes. The rest of us still believe in you. I'm sorry I let you down, son. There's nothing left to believe in. You might as well turn around and head back home. Look, the citizens need your help. The taxpayer's been kidnapped. What? They... The taxpayer? Why didn't you say so? What happened to him? Some people took him. Bastards. They said they're going to execute him on the 6th of November. Dude, are you planting trees? Let me educate you on something myself. What? The net cooling effect of a young, healthy tree is equivalent to 10 room-sized air conditioners operating at full capacity, 20 hours a day. No. You see, planting trees is not a luxury. It's a necessity. Anyway, our city hasn't been the same since you two left. If you don't take action, it'll never be the same again. If the taxpayer's in trouble, we have to do something. That's right. It's the responsible thing to do. We're doing it for him, not for you. You're going to be doing this for everyone who needs you. The city cannot thrive without common sense and personal responsibility. We're in. If we're going, we'll have to make a stop first. Oh, are, are we all riding together then? It'll be quicker and easier. Plus, we'll save gas and money. Cool. I guess I'll drive. Where are we going? To the prison. The prison? I thought you said you were going to help us save the city. Why are we going to a prison? Your intentions are all well and good, Mr. Randolph. But with all due respect, there's only one way to save our city. How? Birth control! Finished yet? Just give me a second. Well, hurry up. We've got a visitor. A visitor? Yeah, three of them, actually. Problem solved. How is it that you know so much about plumbing? Simple. 
Can't control your faucet. You gotta close off your pipes. Common sense. It's been a long time. Indeed it has. You look good. Cut to the chase. Republic is in big trouble. What else is new? It's bad. They kidnapped the taxpayer. So did they? We don't know yet. Some a group referring to themselves as the Alliance. People need you. People? Are those the same people who put me here for passing out free condoms at the university? People make mistakes. All right, that's human nature. But they need us now more than ever. We're getting the band back together. <laughs> I'm needed here. Did you know that the state allows prisoners to impregnate women during conjugal visits? That doesn't make any sense. I can either deal with the offspring when they inevitably wind up here, or I can solve the problem before it starts. Besides, I'm not getting out of here anytime soon. Well, Richard Randolph here works for the mayor's office. We can get you a full part. Sounds like fun, but can't help a group of people who aren't willing to help themselves. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, old friend. Time's up, you crazy broad. You know, we can't make you do anything you don't want to, but just know that you have a personal stake in this mess. What are you talking about? There's one confirmed member of the Alliance. Who? Bad Dad. Okay, men. We have confirmation that common sense and personal responsibility have been temporarily deputized to fight for the city. Earth Control is a maybe. Uh, sorry to interrupt, boss, but what happened to Theodore? The Department of Labor determined that our hiring practices are not in compliance with their standards. He's been replaced by someone who's a little less uh, pigment channel. In English, please? We had too many white guys. Listen, motherfucker, I told you, you don't get your money. I got a job now. So you replaced Theodore with a black guy? Meet Theo. Can I get an advance? Wait, wait. How is hiring someone because they're African any less racist than not hiring someone because they're African? Theo, you were supposed to be here four hours ago. This kind of tardiness is not allowed in government agencies. Unless, of course, it's the DMV. Matt, why are you tripping? It's because I'm black, ain't it? No, it's because you're late. There's a big difference. Meanwhile, at the bad guy lair, Nevertheless, and I've said this before, we remain a constituency, a, a, a nation. Your coffee, coffee sir? One yeah. cream, two sugars. Hey, I said two cream, one sugar. You're right, sir. I'm so sorry. And Sebastian? Yes, sir. I told you, tie bottom, below your belt buckle. I'm sorry, sir. Is this guy really an essential part of our team? I mean, all he does is nap. And I thought I was lazy. Fucking illegal aliens. Jesus Christ. Not cool, Donnie. Watch the blasphemy. It's not nice to say things like that, and it's not illegal alien. He's an undocumented American. How did this jibber-jabber foreigner make it in this league anyhow? I was on a two-year waiting list before I got in. He, he just jumps the fence and here he is? Yeah. The evil alliance he fled from is corrupt, dangerous, bankrupt. You can't just come to our group with all his bad habits and expect a better turnout. Sorry, get my dog on that. Uh, shut up, you dirty Mexican. Oh, come on. Now that's just plain offensive. He's from Mexico, and he's covered in dirt. How would you prefer I address him? Veg, uh, non-veg? I don't give a shit what you want. I'm ordering you a salad. If you don't like it, maybe you should take a fucking English class. For serious. I mean, this is America, right? Now, calm down, people. We'll just call in the translator and get this all sorted out. He has every right to communicate with us. Translator! Order my client, Gulab Jamun, extra curry. My family came from India in 1963. I said we went to Mexico and my people were three. But in looking for prosperity, they ain't looking to go. America is next to me, so that's where I did go. Say, I'm My wife and I, we got to work a baby ship in bed. I traveled to the USA and do what I'm going to do. Take care, school, 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 school,
politically correct? Good question. Can we still make fun of them? Yeah. No, you should never make fun of anyone. Except the Republicans. Those heartless, knuckle-dragging, racist bastards. Just sign your name. Here, gang. Great, but if we're gonna eat, I am gonna get loaded first. Oh no, come on, don't throw your life away. Yeah, and we're worried about you. No, everything's cool. It's not like Passing a drug test is a requirement for my government check. Hey. Did you know your picture was all in the news today? No. How'd I look? What's going on, Richard? Are common sense and personal responsibility really coming back to us? I hope so. They're here in the city tonight. Did you put them up in a hotel? Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, if you can call it that. Personal responsibility doesn't believe in wasting money, so... How did you get involved in all this anyway? I don't know. I guess I was just uh, in the right place at the right time. Look, I'm not actually supposed to talk about it, okay? How was your day? Oh, I don't know why I ever decided to become a teacher. Because you have a gift? Yeah, well, these little shits don't deserve any gifts, I swear to God. Oh, boy. What happened this time? It's like they don't even care. And their parents obviously don't either. But when these kids come home with D's and F's on their report cards, somehow I'm the bad guy. Oh. We all need a bad guy. I hear you have a problem with my kids. These are yours? These are the ones I have this weekend. And they said you're threatening to hold them back a grade? These are your students? I thought you taught grade school. Hey, you act like it's so easy to get through school in six years. It is. Your kids are fucking stupid. It's not true. And I help them with their homework every third Saturday and every second Monday of the month. Unless there's a game on. Maybe that's part of the problem. You want a problem, bitch? Well, you've got one. Boys, teach us some manners. what I do. How do we ever repay you? That's not necessary, but you can help one another by practicing safe sex. Does this mean that you're back? I go where I'm needed. And you'll stay with us till the end? There is no end to what I do. Look, there's a lot of folks who need you out there, and you're going to need a good night's sleep if you want to help save people again. We would be honored if you would stay in our guest room. I don't sleep. I wait. Good night. Who the hell was that? It's birth control. Yeah, I gathered that much. But who is she? Oh. She was born from an unplanned pregnancy, out of wedlock, to a pair of individuals who didn't want her and didn't care for her. 
She spent her entire childhood alone, without support, without family. When she was old enough to speak, she vowed to never let another child suffer her fate, vowed to sacrifice everything in her life to make sure that no other child would grow up without love. Because without love, life is meaningless. And then things got really dark after Common Sense left. I'm gonna take a shower. Hey, wait a minute. I was just thinking. If we shower together, we can save time, money, and water. Yeah, that makes sense. Now what? Do you know who I am, Mr. Taxpayer? No, but from the looks of things, you're an asshole. We'll see about that. Do you know why I'm here, Mr. Taxpayer? You gonna beat the shit out of me like the last guy did? On the contrary. My friends and I all own banks. Not the little ma and pa banks they had decades ago, but giant corporate global banks. Up until a few months ago, we had it all. Money, women, yachts, drugs, slaves, you name it. But apparently, backing retarded Ponzi scheme loans isn't very financially responsible. Don't ask me. I never took an economics class in my life. I was too busy lighting Cuban cigars with Benjamins. We tried to change course and steer in the right direction. How? We shit camped thousands of entry-level employees. But alas, our banks are still failing. So what do you want with me? Well, there's one thing that would make me feel good. Make me feel really good. Don't worry. This won't hurt much. Good afternoon, gentlemen. My name is Special Agent Walter Kilgore of the ASS. I specialize in the criminally insane. Is that all you do? Well, that and zombies, but uh, I haven't seen any of them around for quite some time. Have you? So what do you have for us? Well, thanks to advanced techniques in Facebook stalking, the mastermind antagonist group known only as the Alliance has had all its members identified. As you already know, the group has taken captive the taxpayer and is unwilling to negotiate in any capacity. Now, before we discuss the membership of this group, we must first identify the source of these transgressions. Yo, yo, what do you mean source? Well, throughout the course of human history, bad behavior has been caused by one of two fundamental character flaws. Arrogance and ignorance. Wait, you mean? That's right. Assholes and idiots. For example, we have Dick Pansy, a.k.a. the politician. Pansy promotes fairness and equality, and yet his net worth is estimated at $12 million. Isn't it ironic? He graduated with honors in debate and was voted most likely to text a picture of his junk to a blackjack dealer in Vegas. Next, we have Christian Jones, AKA the Bible Thumper. He's a pastor at a local church. He loves passages from the good book, communion wafers, red wine, and scapegoating. He hates gays, minorities, other religions, free will. He is convinced his God is the right one, and he won't shut up until you agree with him. Next, we have Donald Rutger, a.k.a. the freeloader. He dropped out of school in the eighth grade, gave up on his service job after eight hours, and has been unemployed ever since. He doesn't want to work. He just wants to bang on the drum all day. Next, we have Sakar Rodriguez, an illegal immigrant from Mexico City. He wants all the rights and opportunities afforded to Americans, but he doesn't want to put in the same work and effort. Finally, we have Leah Lush. <coughs> What's wrong with him? A beautiful woman is like kryptonite to common sense. She disrupts his thought process, corrupts his intelligence. 
Well, that makes perfect sense. Why? Well, there is a third cause of bad behavior in humans. But this only affects the Y chromosome. You mean men? That's right. The affection and attention of a gorgeous woman has a higher currency than food, water, or money. Sex appeal has destroyed more lives than smallpox, polio, and the plague combined. Good, honest, hardworking men turn to douchebags overnight with even the mere potential of sex. And yet these women have the stones to complain that there are no nice guys left in the world. Well, we should get moving. I agree, but first we need to find some help. Help? What do you mean? We've been out of action for a very long time, and it wouldn't hurt to find ourselves a little backup. That's right. Every good superhero needs a sidekick. On a side note, can somebody tell me where the comfort station is? Sure, it's down the hall on your left. I'd watch your aim, though. Why? The bathroom attendant has a bit of a temper. Excuse me, sir, but could you please explain the sign to me? As you wish. Bad aim caused by a tiny dick. Well, two little squares should do the trick. Stink bomb unleashed when the movement begins. With the courtesy flush, well, everyone wins. But if a on the counter would be an error in judgment that would haunt him forever. <laughs> Whichever areas on the board get hit are the ones we spend money on. Oh. All right. Give it a go. Isn't there a better way to do this? Trust me. This is the best system we've got. Have at it. <coughs> oh, wow. Jackpot. <laughs> way to go. Hmm. Look, where does the funding come from? Uh, from the taxpayer. <coughs> I know. We, we hate the taxpayer. But it's really necessary to kill him? Mm. We gotta need him. <laughs> you gotta learn to aim high, girl. You see, why settle for a small fraction of the taxpayer's power when we can have it all? I think about it this way. 30% is a lot smaller than 100%, right? You see, only by sacrificing him and redistributing his power can we truly make things equal. Those without jobs have come to depend upon those with them. And in turn, those looking to be employed maintain a responsibility to help them. God damn it, not again. Gus. He's still reading my playbook. I thought I told you. No ghost stories before bed. That book was written so long ago. It's hardly relevant in this day and age. And it's been translated over and over again so many times that nobody really knows what it's supposed to be about anymore. 
And frankly, I have a hard time with any book that endorses the mistreatment of innocent women and the murder of helpless children. All that scary paranormal stuff, it's just going to give me nightmares again. Oh, come on, Mom, just 10 more minutes. No, Jacob, it's time for bed. That's right, son. Do as your mother tells you. And I'll be in in a minute to tuck you in as soon as I'm finished with Exodus 2115. Dad, is the boogeyman real? Oh, son, that's only fairy tales meant to scare little boys like yourself. But why? Well, some people use make-believe in order to force other people to behave. Will you check under my bed for monsters? Don't be ridiculous. There are no monsters. How do you know? Have you seen any? No. So there's no reason to go on believing that invisible monsters are always watching you. Now say your prayers and go to bed. He wouldn't read those awful ghost stories. He's got quite the imagination, doesn't he? Yes, he does. And that's what worries me. Someday he's going to realize that some of the best parts of his life are make-believe. Only then can he let the wonder of God in. Oh, honey, you always know just what to say to make me feel better. Thank you. Don't thank me. Thank the love that Jesus put into my heart. Good, Good night. night. Thank you all for joining us on such short notice. Those who don't know us, I'm Common Sense. 
This is personal responsibility. Next to him is birth control, Richard Randolph. We held this meeting today in the hopes of finding one or multiple sidekicks. Any questions? Yeah, uh, what kind of benefits are you offering? The opportunity to serve your country and make the world a better place. All right, then. If there aren't any more questions, I think we'll start the hiring process. After looking over your applications, I think we can make an informed decision. We'll take the three men in fatigue with extensive military experience. Great. Congratulations, guys. Come on up. Not so fast. Who the hell are you? I work for the Department of Labor. I'm here to make sure that your hiring practices are fair, just, and legal. To protect minorities, women, handicapped individuals, and those people with alternative sexual orientations. No, it's cool. This is a private gig. We don't even need help from the government. Mm. On the contrary. There's a certain protocol you must follow. No, we got this. We're going to war, and we're taking the three soldiers. I notice your three recruits happen to be white men. Everyone who answered the call was a white man. Plus, we already got a female and a black guy. If you can't give me another black, you can give me a gay. I assume you've questioned these individuals as to their sexual preferences? What the hell does that matter? I'm not certain if you're aware, but the atrocity that was don't ask, don't tell has been rightfully overturned. How many of you men are homosexual? Well, sir, I, I once gave, gave a guy a Dutch rudder back in college when I was drunk. Does that count? Not good enough. Sir, I once had a threesome with a woman and another dude. I may be a little gay. Close, but no cigar. Well, uh, once I accidentally clicked on one of them, Homosexual, uh, internet porn sites, and, well, let's just say, you know, it took me about ten seconds to click off, you know what I mean? Can anyone be ten seconds on a gay porn site? Guilty! Oh, this is lame. Ah, thanks for the reminder. I almost forgot about the Americans with Disabilities Act. A cripple <laughs> would look really good on paper. Are there any handicapped folk in the crowd? <laughs> Morning, kids. Good morning. Hello. Do we know what today is? It's Monday. And do you remember what happens on Mondays? Oh, wow, it. You are correct. Let's take this out here. Karen, we'll start with you, sweetie. It looks as though you've completed all the tasks on your list and are therefore entitled to $10 of weekly allowance. There you go, sweetie. Congratulations. Now, Martin. You've failed to complete any of the tasks on your chore list for the week, and instead have chosen to play outside, neglect your homework, and remain glued to the television set. As a result, you don't get any allowance. What? That's not fair. You know, you're right. It isn't fair. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take half of the allowance that you earned, sweetie, and give it to your brother. Sweet. Wait, how is that fair? Now you each have five dollars. But he didn't do anything. Sweetie, that's what's known as an income transfer, and as you continue to progress through life, you'll realize it's what makes the world go round, okay? Now, grab your knapsacks and head outside to your bus stop. I don't want you to be late for school, okay? Have a great day, kids. And remember, Mommy and Daddy love you. Earl, we gotta go, man. Even though the congressman was running late, his lack of punctuality failed in comparison to that of his co-worker. My alarm goes off at six each day When I wish all my worries away But without thoughts of work racing through my head I usually just go back to bed <laughs>
doing? Where are you? Uh, we're just doing a little musical number. Who's we? Uh, my wife, welfare man, a couple guys looking for a free lunch. How much more singing and dancing do you have left? We did the intro, verse, chorus, guitar solo, verse, chorus. All we have is the outro. Well, skip the outro. It's redundant. And get your ass over here, or else we're going to find another freeloader. Aye, aye, Captain. A man tries to run an evil empire. Are you sure you don't want guns? We're sure. We haven't had the proper firearm training. That's right. Guns are dangerous. If you say so. God, those costumes are badass. Where'd you get them? My mother made them. Making them is easy. It's cleaning them up in between battles. It's a little tricky. How's everybody doing on drinks and everything? This lemonade is to die for. Oh, good, good. Just don't drink it too fast. You get brain freeze. We know, Mom. <laughs> well, sometimes you forget your manners when you're running out to fight crime. Mom. But when I suggest you take some flashlights with you, sometimes those things go longer than you expect them to. It gets dark out there. You want to be able to see. I have flares. I'll be fine. Ooh, don't get them too close to your face, honey. You might go blind. Mom, you're embarrassing me. So this is a woman behind personal responsibility. Mm -hmm. Ain't been easy, though. He wasn't born this way. It's taken a lot of work and patience. Well, it all paid off. Your triumphs as a mother have created the greatest superhero the city has ever seen. Yeah, he's better at protecting people than he is keeping his room clean. Mom, we got it. Oh, sorry, honey. Okay, okay. Yeah, I'll get on about your business. I'll go check on the sandwiches. Okay, kid. Listen up. The Alliance should be awaiting orders in the main hall on the third floor. If you can gain access, you should have a chance to neutralize them. As far as we know, the taxpayer is being held at the very lower level. Pansy's speech will be given in the auditorium on the main floor. There's a service elevator near the south end. I don't know how, but we need to stop him before he brainwashes the crowd. I'll do it. Are you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I got involved because I wanted to help. That hasn't changed. Good for you, son. You'll have to move fast. If we let him get to the end of his speech, we'll have the whole crowd turn against us. Chip. And if that happens, we're fucked. No. If that happens, we abort. Abort? You can't just abort at the first sign of trouble. There's a human life at stake here. Yes. This is not a good plan to begin with. We should consider other options. Aborting anything seems wildly irresponsible. If the proper precautions are taken, abortion should never be necessary. The odds against us are overwhelming. We'll never make it. Well, it's your call to make, sir. But only if you're sure. A mission can't be unaborted. And I sure as hell didn't come this far just to give up now. Regardless... The boys and I will be monitoring your progress from the Oval Office. Remember, your primary objective is to neutralize the congressman's orbs. Without them, he's just another asshole. Now, are there any questions? Are you ready for sandwiches? Yum. Just be sure to eat them over the plate, or else we'll have crumbs all over the plate. We know, Mom. And be sure to take a sip of water between every bite. It helps with digestion. Mom! And I know you ain't going out looking like that. Your belt doesn't match your shoes. Mom! Okay. <clears throat> We take a quick lunch. After that, it's time to kick some ass. Meanwhile, at the bad guy lair. Okay, now that we're all here, we can finally get started. Everyone, this is Ronald from Marketing. He's here to help us find our identity. Now, tomorrow, to coincide with the execution of the taxpayer, we will be holding our first ever public rally. By the 7th of November, everyone, will know who we are. Therefore, it becomes imperative that we agree upon a cool, catchy name for ourselves. Ronald, thank you. The cornerstone of any successful business is creating a name that people will remember. Coca-Cola, Budweiser, Sex World. These are all businesses that thrive because their names are synonymous with their reputations. But part of an effective brand name is creating an identity that is not only pleasing to the ears, but also respectful to people's sensibilities. So, I'm gonna run down this list of possible titles for this organization. And if any of you finds a particular name offensive, simply tap the buzzer that's been placed in front of you. Any questions? Good, let's begin. For starters, how about Hell's Bells? Okay, good. The Alpha Males. All right. Uh, Angel Wings. Fair enough. The American Defenders. The Blackjack. Spinning Crosses. Evolution of Men at Arms. Working toward a better, the equal opportunity. Oh, Jesus Christ. Hey, fuck you. 
Okay, all right, if you could all please quit your bitching. All right, you know what? You call this an evil alliance? All I see here is a group of goddamn people. Just have the damn thing, I don't care. All I know is this, it takes two people to get a bitch pregnant, so you're just as guilty as I am. Bullshit, no way. The most I can do is have these on an abortion. Whatever, you weren't that good anyway. You know what, if you have a problem with it, take it up with the taxpayer. You know the best thing about married chicks? They don't try to rope you into a relationship. You guys having a meeting or something? Again, please just leave me alone. Hello, Mr. Taxpayer. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Terrence Millen, and I'm in charge of the teachers union here in town, Local 101. I understand you have a big day tomorrow. Are you nervous? Nothing can surprise me at this point. Well, we'll see about that. Now, sir, I'm not sure how familiar you are with the public education system, but between you and me and the four walls here, well, it's a mess. Despite record levels of funding, kids still come out as imbeciles. And there are certain political individuals that shall remain nameless. They, uh, well, they seem to think that us teachers should bear some of the responsibility for this unmitigated failure. You say to me, longer school years. I say, fuck you. You say, uh, shorter vacation periods. I say, not on my watch. You ask me to contribute a small amount of my income to my own personal retirement fund. I ask you to eat shit. Am I making myself clear, Mr. Taxpayer? I can't hear you, sir. My right ear's been clapped from blood forest trauma. I didn't want to tell you what happened to my left ear. Now, I know you're being put to death tomorrow, sir, but I thought we could have a little fun before that happens. Now, these things are apparently a very painful form of mind control. Not that that matters, you see. Uh, Mr. Taxpayer, I really don't want anything from you. I decided to come down here and watch a squirm. Now, uh, brace yourself, just. This is gonna hurt like hell. Thank you. 
of this press conference has been kept under wraps, but many top officials believe this will be Pansy's long-awaited bid for the presidency. Pansy would be only the second white president since the year 2000, and although we know nothing about his policies, it's clear he is the perfect man for the job. Could be the hopey changey one we've been waiting for. Considering his reputation for being secretive about all of his intentions, patriotic supporters are expected to turn out in record numbers, because regardless of his merits or intentions, people love to hear politicians talk about him. With the all-important black... Hispanic and gay votes still up in the air, this could be a crucial night for Pansy and his camp. And although he's certain to say only what his mindless followers want to hear, I'm sure it will be a night we won't soon forget. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Dick Pansy. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. I stand at podium to address you on what remains a very, very important day in the history of this great country. For today, we finally gain and attain revenge on an individual so vile, so disgusting, so selfish, that even I barely possess the adjectives to describe him. For this individual has been handed everything in life, spoon-fed on a silver platter since the moment of his separation from the womb. And moreover, what remains so tragic is that even still, even given this life of ease, this life of privilege, he remains reluctant to act or respond in generosity when even the most deserving of individual approaches him with their handout for a handout. Great speech. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I further stand before you today to remind that we exist not as a nation of individuals, no sir, no ma'am, but instead as a family, a big family, a democracy. today to declare that it is time, finally, that he pay his fair share. Yes, ladies and gentlemen. Now I beg the question, 
Does that seem right to you? No! And are we not going to do something about it? Yeah! No! Well, not if I, presidential candidate Dick Pansy, have anything to say about it, damn it! <laughs> your very eyes, we will perform what millions and millions of Americans, myself included, have waited a very, very long time to occur. For here before your very eyes, and in front of the entire televised world, we will finally and mercilessly crucify the American taxpayer! Yes, ladies and gentlemen! Yes! With you two, you're fucking done. You're done. Thank you. How'd it go? How'd I look? I looked at it. Go ahead. Good. Good. Uh, good. <clears throat> Ladies and gentlemen, there, there are many points in the congressman's speech that I would like to address, but one of them seems to be of the utmost importance. 
For those of you who are familiar with the founding of this great nation, you will know that we were established as a republic, not a democracy. Now, the two are fairly similar, but with one glaring difference. The republic is meant to temper the whims of the majority and to avoid hasty decision by mob rule by protecting the individual. His success has nothing to do we'll with finish. morality nor obligation. He's Sebastian. just an individual Sebastian, cut who the through you hard cut the work, patience, and planning accrued some cut wealth. Cut the volume, man. And despite an idiot. what the congressman says, that is not our money. That is his money. Now, I, I know that our society has its problems, and those problems need to be addressed. But we cannot just beat, torture, torment, and, and rape the taxpayer. You cannot solve a problem by throwing money at it. Money is a remedy, not a cure. And you have to remember that the taxpayer is not a superhero. He's only human, like you and me. So to punish him is to punish ourselves. It's time that we stop looking to him for help and start looking towards personal responsibility and common sense. They are the superheroes. And for a long time, they helped make this country a great place. But you have got to have faith in them. You have got to believe in them because only then can we put our petty, insignificant differences aside and really start to solve some goddamn problems. I believe in common sense and personal responsibility. I believe in common sense and personal responsibility. I do believe in common sense and personal responsibility. After the rally, a new level of respect found its way to Mr. and Mrs. Richard Randolph. The hot chick had a change of heart and decided to use her powers only for good. The Bible thumper was convicted and sentenced to four years in a state-run penitentiary. For very long, very hard years. Once inside, however, he discovered that sometimes the forbidden fruit is also the sweetest. Oops. Bad Dad was forced to open and run a child care center for all 800 of his illegitimate kids. The immigrant was forced to work at the immigration office. There, he felt the cold sting of irony. Judging by the stink, I guess you can do but irony was not a punishment that he alone would have to endure. Here you go, Mr. Rothschild. Coffee, one cream, two sugar. Is there anything else I can do? I said two creams, one sugar. I apologize. Yeah, that's my fault. Give me another one. Yes, Boy, people are the worst. Not all endings, however were quite so grim. Then, that was good work. But now it's time for the mustache squad to raise its game. Starting tomorrow, full facial hair. Birth control, what are you doing here? I'm leaving on a jet plane. Where are you going? I'm headed out east to face my biggest challenge yet, and you're coming with me. Africa? Me? Why me? Because... You're Cornelius Pebblefoot. 
I love that man. As for common sense and personal responsibility, they went back to work and once again made the United States of America the coolest fucking place on Earth. Me. <laughs> Resist arrest, you little shit. <laughs> no problem, ma'am. I can provide you with a state-of-the-art abortion. <laughs> <laughs> well, shit. I forgot my fucking line. I'm counting on love it, baby. I'm counting on love it, baby. Everything's gonna be alright. Just be sure to eat the on your plate, too, you know, because then, you know, crumbs all over the place. You know? <laughs> <laughs> that was great. <laughs> because you're going to eat You can't even do it. <laughs> you can't even do it. <laughs> Sorry. Boys, teach us some manners. He's using a child, you child, child. What the? I'm counting on love, baby. On the count of the fucking joke in your life. Everything is gonna be alright. Thank you. 